what is going on guys it is me the xander zone and i am back with another video a video like i i haven't done many videos i've mostly done streams and uh, i'm here going to be showcasing everything that is new in the 1.17 update um yeah, here we go so before this video begins i wanted to just address a few things um one of which is why i haven't been streaming and i just got mentally i got kind of burnt out of it um i was just doing the same thing basically and I'm going to be streaming some more probably next week. Uh, I've also been busy with life and baseball. Like, had tournaments and stuff. And another thing is, this video is coming out a day late because yesterday I tried to record it. However, the Elgato just messed up and it wouldn't work. I'm pretty sure the problem was it was plugged into a faulty USB. So, yeah, I guess um, that'll do it. So jump back to the video enjoy so like I said this video is going to be showcasing everything that is new in the 1.17 update and first off we're just gonna start with some basic things like the texture changes the compass has been changed um, if you look at it now it's much more I'd say refined and bright it's got more shading on it as well and the clock is um, a bit more bright gold and then the jungle door had a change I'm not I can see it a bit it's more shaded um, that's really all and so we're gonna get into amethyst um i'm really excited about amethyst it's a bit dark it's because i don't have night vision on but as you can see here you can walk around on it it makes a very nice sound um we have amethyst clusters and a bunch of other stuff that we'll get into right here so we have amethyst clusters and these are grown on budding amethyst which is this block and they'll just grow over time on the sides they start off in phase one which is medium amethyst bud then phase two which is large amethyst bud and then they become a cluster now you can break amethyst clusters and they drop amethyst shards and broken if broken and they can be affected by fortune these are amethyst shards and these are used to craft the telescope and that's i believe it um you can also these can be picked up if you have silk touch and if you break it by hand, it only drops two amethyst shards, but with a pickaxe, it drops four without fortune. Um, then we have we have the amethyst block, and this is basically um, this is basically this stuff, the main part of the amethyst. It makes a nice sound. There's nothing. There's no crafting recipes that it can be used for. It's just here to here to look cool um, it can be crafted it can also be crafted with four amethyst shards uh, here we have calcite which is the right outside this is calcite right here it is the second layer of the of the geode and these are geodes most uh, most geodes have an open side like this ours was however unfortunately in a cave so we just tunneled this out um, we have calcite here and then we have um, smooth basalt, which is the outer shell of the geode. And it is mostly a decorative block. It looks pretty cool. And that is that is all for the amethyst section. So uh, jump cut back to the main area. So here we have deep slate. And deep slate is found very low down in the ground. And it has a ton of different variations, as you can tell. So we have basic deep slate which is just like this cobbled deep slate deep slate tiles which i really like the look of these and then cracked deep slate tiles deep slate bricks cracked deep slate bricks chiseled deep slate polished deep slate and infested deep slate and infested is basically um silverfish will spawn uh, then we have slabs cobbled deep slate polished um deep slate tile and then deep slate brick and slabs and the same in stairs they all look pretty cool and then we get into ores so in deep slate um, like areas we now have ores and these take longer to break other than that I believe they are the exact same they just look different and take longer to break um, we get into the basic ores now they, these also had texture changes the diamond hasn't changed too much it's a bit brighter uh, the emerald hasn't changed or it has changed you can tell like there's a lot more green and the redstone is a lot smoother in my opinion same with the lapis we have copper 
obviously. Um, that's pretty exciting. We have gold, iron, and coal. These all had changes. And now we have raw, raw iron, raw gold, and raw copper. Now you get these from just mining them. I believe I have, oh wait, I'm creative. <laughs> My brain is small. Um, so with how it works, when you mine them, you get raw gold. Now if you were to mine it without fortune, you would get like, I believe it's only one gold. But if you have fortune, you can get two or three, or one to three. Um, and same goes with copper. And then you can smelt it in a blast furnace or a normal furnace. And once it's fully smelted, it turns into a bar. Now you can combine the raw metal into blocks of raw metal. So we have a block of raw, a block of raw um, copper, a block of raw gold, and a block of raw iron. These are, I believe, purely decorative blocks. They can be transformed in or out of the raw metal form. And here's my favorite, one of my favorite parts is block of copper. Now these are all waxed because we don't want the oxidization process. But if you take a block of copper and you put it in a crafting table with a um, honeycomb, then you get a waxed block of copper and it will not change its state. So oxidization is when it goes from this to this and then to this and then fully to this. Um, now you can also wax at this stage, at the weathered stage, or at the oxidized stage. So you can have all of these different stages waxed. Now, if we come back over here. Now we have um, stuff that is made with copper and more just in-depth of copper. So first off we have the spyglass, and I know many people are excited for it. First off you hold it like this, which is pretty cool, and then when you zoom in you can see way farther away. I think I saw a reddit post of someone who was comparing Optifine to the Spyglass and the Spyglass was much zoomed in, much more zoomed in than Optifine. Also if you go into third person you you look like a pirate. It's pretty cool. Um, continuing on from that, it is made with two copper ingots and one amethyst shard just in this pattern. Just. One amethyst shard at the very top and two copper ingots. And then boom, spyglass. It is pretty cool. One of my favorite additions. Next up we have blocks of copper. Or um, cut copper, my bad. Um, so we have cut copper, and then wax or exposed cut copper, weathered cut copper, and oxidized cut copper. Um, one second guys, I need to do a jump cut. All right, sorry about that. Um, continuing on, we have the cut copper of all the different types, and these are all waxed, just to show that um, you can wax them and prevent the oxidization. But if you put like waxed weathered copper in, you can make the cut copper and then the bricks and the stairs, or the um, the slabs and the stairs, which I'll get into in a second. You can like make the stairs or the bricks, and it'll still be waxed. And then you can put in like the fully uh, oxidized or just the exposed copper or just the block and it'll just fully it'll fully change it and it will stay waxed um, here we have what the different stairs look like we have obviously cut copper exposed we have weathered and then we have oxidized and the same thing with the slabs and uh, the final part of the copper area is the lightning rod now the lightning rod um, shows Basically, it will attract lightning to this one area. Now, it is not guaranteed that it will, it will hit there. Like, lightning could strike over there. Over there is more likely that will strike right here. And when it does, it makes a redstone pulse, a redstone signal of 15. So it will travel 15 blocks long. I only have three right here. But I believe it goes 15. So turn it to thunder. And while we wait, um, it is made so simply with three, uh, three copper ingots, just like this, straight in a row down the middle. So if you look right here, you craft it, and boom, lightning rod. And it, it looks like something kind of out of a mod, just like the way it looks. Did not mean to do that. Just the way it kind of looks, it looks like something out of a mod. And I feel like there are a lot of things like that in this update. And there you go, you can see it right there. 
struck it. In case you missed it, we do have a riptide, or channeling, my bad. Trident, so you can just throw it onto the light, and it will strike it, and it will carry out a rescue signal. It's very cool. It is um, a really good update, in my opinion. I'm, I'm excited to see what people do with it, and I feel like they can make it look like a lamp, because just looking at it, it screams lamp. Um, turn it back to clear weather, and jump cut to the next section. Next up we have miscellaneous items, basically items couldn't find anywhere else to put in the entire thing. Probably should have done these last, however, here they are. So first up is dripstone, and we have pointed dripstone, and basically you can put it like this, and then it will either grow on the floor or on the ceiling, and they can hook together. And also, as you can see there, it was dripping water. But this is this is stalactite and this is stalagmite, or vice versa. I cannot remember for the life of me. But if you look here, you can put that there, and this will drip water more often. And we can come back in a little bit and see that the cauldron has spilled up. This one is also dripping water, so I will put the cauldron there. Next up, we have dripstone blocks, and I believe. The main purpose of these is um, in it's a decorative block um, it's basically made of this but it's in a cube it looks the same dripstone clusters like clusters of these can occasionally be found in like an actual cave I believe down at the geode there was one and it just had um, some of these and some stalactites and stalagmites just around and um, they can be crafted from por four pointed dripstone or dripstone just in a square. Do not have the crafting recipe, sadly, but just take four of these in a square pattern like so. Next up, we have the powder snow, and the powder snow is one of my favorite things. Um, first off, you sink in it. Um, you cannot climb out. You're just stuck. You can jump all you want. You're stuck, and. If you're in survival for a long enough amount of time, you'll start to take damage. However, even though you're not able to climb out if you have leather, leather boots on, you can hold X and you can climb and even stand on it. Um, it also breaks your fall. You can teleport up. Made this platform here. Uh, we can turn to survival. And if we fall straight into it, it breaks your fall. Now if you stay in here, you can see the sides of the screen slowly start to freeze and then you'll start taking damage and you can you can even see the hearts turn icy which I think is such a cool idea it just looks so cool and for a while once you get out or for not for a while but for a little bit once you get out you're, you'll be slower um, so with the skeletons if you place them in after 45 seconds they'll turn into a stray and there will be an update which I'll talk about uh, probably last in the video that will lower that down to 20 seconds um, next up we have tough and tough is a very strange walk uh, there does not seem to be a purpose for it right now um, it's it's a stone it's a deep grayish stone this is a quote from the wiki a deep grayish stone that generates in blobs between levels 0 and 16 uh, it's purely decorative that's the only information on the wiki of it I'll link the wiki article that I'm using down below in the description along with any other sources that I'm using, which I think is just the wiki. Basically, all it is is a decorative block. You can find it between Y levels 0 and 16. That's about the whole the whole point. But as you can see here, that was definitely not 45 seconds. But uh, he turned into a stray, and I'm excited to see people make a stray farm because I feel like I already have a good idea for one. It probably won't be the best one, but it's a pretty, pretty good idea. So there's a stray. Stray farms are going to be really good. Next up, we have tinted glass. Excuse me. And the point of tinted glass is it's like it's like uh, black stained glass. However, um, it doesn't let light through. As you can see right there, there's no light through, even though it's bright as day. And if you go into it, there's no light through. It can be crafted with four amethyst shards and a glass glass block just look up the recipe one second 
Um, it has, it is a basically just glass block in the center, and then four amethyst shards on all the sides of it. Um, it's a really cool block. I'm not quite sure what the best purpose would be. Like, what would people use this for? I'm sure, um, it also keeps light from getting out. So if you wanted, like, I don't know, a base with only light inside of it, that could be a cool idea. Um, if you wanted, like, a decorative light block, but you don't want the light getting out, that could also be a cool idea for it. I'm not too sure. Alright, so um, we're going to be moving on to the next section now. So next up, we have plants. All the different plants in the update. Yeah. Next up are the plants. So these are all the different types of plants that were added in with the new update. First we have the spore blossom, which can be placed on the roof, like so, and it gives off these dripping particles. Um, it's pretty cool. Let me just go to the wiki part about it. So spore blossoms can be placed only on the underside of a block, like so. Uh, since green particles downwards, and they just appear in the air around the block. Like, as you can see, there's one there. They're just all around. Uh, next we have azalea and flowering azalea. These are just plants. They're just bushes. They're pretty cool looking. Um, I don't think they have any special... Um... They yield azalea and sticks on decay. Has variants, um, like shown with either no blossoms or blossoms. Variant with pink blossoms is counted as small flowers by the game, for, um, and that means bees can pollinate them. And in the 1.18, uh, 1.18 update, they can also be grown into trees. Um, I'm pretty excited for that, actually. They're gonna look cool. Next up, we have drip leaf and small drip leaf. Big drip leaf like this, and small drip leaf. Um, I have no idea how to get small drip leaf to work. Like, I've tried a good chunk of stuff. It just won't work. Big drip leaf allows people to stand on it for 30, or 1.5 seconds, which is also 30 ticks. And if you stand on it for too long, it'll go down into the dip down state, like right here. Not that one. The first one, just the... That. The one that, like, you can see for a brief second, it'll just tilt down the tilt happens in three stages it says it says unstable partial and full um, all the stages are solid except for the full stage when the player falls through um, when nobody stand this is a none stage this stage just doesn't exist so this is like unstable partial and then full tilt can be present prevented by powering it with redstone but hitting it with projectile still causes it to tilt it comes in two sizes, um, small and big. Small can be applied bone meal to grow into big. Again, like I said, I, I just couldn't get the small to work. Um, it can be obtained with shears, otherwise it just breaks. The small drip leaf can. And it can be planted on clay or moss blocks or underwater on clay and dirt blocks. Okay. And a big drip leaf can be obtained with any tool or by hand and can be planted on grass, dirt, and moss blocks. Next, we have moss blocks. And. Yeah, okay, here's small drip leaf. I don't believe you can stand on it. You cannot. But yeah, it can be done on moss. I did not know that. So here we have moss blocks, and. They're just. They're a decorative block. Um, quote from the wiki An opaque block with a grass like texture on all sides. Uh, can be fertilized with bone meal to grow tall grass and tall grass. Um moss carpets and both types of, of azaleas on on it and within and in its vicinity so basically you can use bone meal and make either tall grass grass moss carpets both types of azalea just either on top of it or around it um can be combined with cobblestone or stone bricks to make mossy versions so we have like mossy cobble and stuff it can just be combined with that that makes actually makes a lot of sense 
And then binds can still be used in addition to must blocks uh, for the cobblestone. We have then we have moss carpet, which, um, as shown earlier, can be grown with bone meal, but can also be crafted with two moss blocks like so. Like basic crafting recipe, get this. three moss carpets. And they can obviously stack on each other like normal moss carpet or like normal carpets. Um, next we have rooted dirt and rooted dirt and hanging roots. So rooted dirt is something typically on the ceiling and then you can place hanging roots only on the bottom of it. If I go to the page on the wiki, a dirt like decorative block with roots on its texture. That's, that's a quote from the wiki. Um, similar to coarse dirt, neither mycelium nor grass can spread on it, and using bone meal on any sides grows hanging roots underneath. So hanging roots can only be underneath, but using bone meal on any side causes it to grow underneath. Um, now we are going to jump cut to the next section, which is um, di the different glowing items. So here we are at all the different glowing items. Um, I'm going to set it to night. And here we have glowberries. I did not mean to do that. Uh, they don't glow right now, and I don't even think you can plant them. Uh, they can be eaten, restoring two hunger points. They grow on cave vines, which I believe we're getting cave vines in the next update, which is sad. Um, brain fart. Uh, they're also used to breed foxes, which is what I was just about to show. So, you can feed them both to a fox. And then boom, baby fox. Next up is Glow Lichen. And here's Glow Lichen right here. It is just a glowy kind of vine that you can place on any side of the block. Even on the floor. Or underneath, I believe. And you'll just find this randomly in caves. I believe you use shears to destroy it. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's a cool block. It's a cool kind of just entity. In itself, there's no crafting recipe, like I said. Um, it's a light level of 7, and it's rarely found in caves. And it can be growing on any face of the block, whether that be sides, on top, or beneath. Uh, and, you, and you obtain it with shears, which makes sense. It doesn't spread naturally, although bone meal can be... You spread it horizontally or vertically, if on the side of a block. It spreads to adjacent spaces up to 4, can be waterlogged. And unlike vines, does not pop off when underwater and is not climbable. So you cannot climb them. And if it was underwater, they wouldn't fall off. Next, we have the glowing item frame, which we've been using this whole time. So this will be dark, but the glowing item frame makes it not. And you can even just see the comparison. It, this is just a lot brighter. We, we have some polished deep slate, which is what we made the pads out of, just for a comparison. Glow, glow item frame. The not one, the not glowing one, you can easily tell the difference. It's just brighter. It's like a brighter kind of coloring. And it's made with a glow ink sack right next to an item frame anywhere in the crafting table. Like, you can, you can literally put it anywhere. And it will work. Alright, jump cut to the next section, which is going to be the final section in the mobs. So here we have the new mobs that are in the 1.17 update. And my favorite boy, the goat boy. The spawn egg looks like this, and he's, he's a really cool, really cool mob. I'm excited. I'm glad they added the goat in. Goats can actually jump, I believe, five blocks high. I read something on the wiki. Uh, goats spawn in mountain biomes, which this is actually a mountain biome. And, um... We did find some naturally spawning goats, however, I turned off. I turned off uh, mob spawning. So, these they spawn in mountain biomes, which is currently a placeholder until new mountains are added. They can jump higher than other mobs to avoid obstacles, which is around 5 blocks tall. Uh, it takes reduced fall damage, avoid pow avoids powder snow by jumping over it. it, can be bred with wheat to produce a baby goat. I actually didn't know that. Um, a bucket can be used on them to get some milk. It's it's just milk. It's not renamed to goat milk or anything. It's just milk. Just sad. 
uh, drops one goat horn when, horn when ramming into a block, which we are getting goat horns in, I believe, the 1.18 update. And they have a 2% chance of spawning as a screaming goat, which are more hostile and make different noises. Next up, we have the glow squid. The glow squid, I, 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 I don't want him, honestly. Like, who wanted this guy? Who, who, who really wanted this guy? But, um, he swings around. Second, so you can tell how enthusiastic I am about the glow squid. I didn't want him. I really didn't. I wanted the move loom because I like Minecraft Earth and I really wanted it in Minecraft. But here we are. Here we are with this this abomination. I mean, even the ice or ice that would have been cool. Uh, but they can. They're underwater mobs that are basically a regular squid. And when you punch them, here's my favorite part. When you punch them, glowy bunch of um they just spit out glowing ink and they also lose their color for a little bit which is pretty cool they have these cool green particles around them they're cool to look at and they'd be good for an aquarium but i just don't like them uh, they are attacked by axolotls without provoc prov without being provoked <laughs> um drops they drop glow ink sacks when killed which can be used to make the glow item frames they don't affect the light level but appear as if lit up goes in the same way that magma cube cores ma yeah magma cube cores cores vexes blazes and the eyes of spiders drowned in endermen do they light up but don't affect the light level basically and they stop going for a short time and swim away quickly after taking damage which like i really i think it's cool but nah. and um let me set it to night real quick and just give you a quick show of what it looks like at night you can see it's glowing it's very bright, however, it does not change the light level. So it does not make it so that mobs will not spawn. Which, in my opinion, is a good addition. Turn back today, because, like, you could just have a bunch of glow squids around, and then no mobs would spawn. That'd be kind of... I think it'd be cool, but it'd be weird. And finally, we have my favorite boy, Axolotl. Now, um, axolotls can be in buckets of axolotl, and if this isn't the cutest thing you've ever seen, then, like, I don't know what is. Look at it. It is adorable. Um, I love it. I'm so glad they added an axolotl. I saw it in the real area in the reveal trailer, and I was like, I need it in my life right now. I just knew I needed him. Um, there's a lot to cover on axolotl. So, first off, they spawn in underwater or underground water sources. Uh, the first amphibian added to Minecraft. Fun fact: they dry out and start taking damage after five-ish minutes of being out of water. Can be caught using a water bucket like fish. Um, This is why you gotta come prepared. But, um, geez, it's very finicky. So, boom, bucket of axolotl, and you can just place it back. Very, very cool. I, I love the axolotl, like I said. One of my favorite additions to the game. So, next up is uh, they can be bred using buckets of tropical fish. It does say buckets and not just tropical fish, so I believe you do need the bucket. Uh, they come in five different colors, um, Loextic, Lue yellow, brown, white, and blue, with blue being the rarest. And blues are about a 1 in 12,000 chance. Uh, plays dead when damaged on water, receiving regeneration 1. Um, this regeneration ability is likely based on how real axolotls can regrow lost limbs, which is a fun fact. Uh, they attack drowns, guardians. Drowned Guardians, Elder Guardians, Squids, Glow Squids, and Fish, dealing two hearts of damage. That's actually pretty good. They're dealing two damage, which is one heart. They have two minute cooldown after hunting non-hostile targets, such as Fish and Squids. They priori prioritize attacking hostile mobs over passive ones. If a player kills a mob an Axolotl is in combat with, the player gets a regeneration one effect and is rid of mining fatigue if they had it. So basically, if you're going to go for the... Um, Ocean Monument, take a bunch of axolotls. So now I'm going to try and get the different variants of the axolotl. I doubt I'm going to be able to get the blue one. If we just come over here, make a quick pit. This will be our axolotl murder pit. So here is the brown one, or the wild one. No, it's a brown one. <laughs> um, this is This one has a pretty good chance, I believe. As a 
24.98 chance. Um, the pink, brown, gold, and cyan one all have a 24.98 chance, and then the blue one has a 0 .083. Uh, here's the cyan one, uh, gold one, pink one. Nope, another cyan. Pink one. There's the pink one. Did not mean to do that. So now we just spawn until we get a blue one. This might take a little while. About a minute in, this is how many axolotls I've spawned in, and no blue one yet, so I guess back to the grind. This is like half a minute later, and my game is starting to chug, so we're just gonna go away from here, dig another hole, and we can come back to that hole, and they'll all be dead. So, um, yeah, here we, here we have, um, axolotl murder spot number two, and I found a pretty sweet, like, I found a sweet spot in the last one where I could just spawn multiple axolotls, like this. You're just sending them in. It's very effective. So yeah, uh, I will be back with you either in a progress update or if I get a blue one. About probably four or five minutes after the last one. Um, I thought about it. I thought I'm 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 just murdering a bunch of axolotls at this point. I did slash kill because my game is really starting to lag a lot. And, um, the blue is just, like, kind of a deepish color of blue. It's like the cyan one, but deeper color. And where the cyan one, let me see. Come on. Where the cyan one has pink stuff, the blue one is orange. Um, so there's just, like, the tail is orange, and then the little bits on its head are orange. Its feet are just pure blue. And that is, that's the end of it. So... There are a few things I want to cover. Um, like, in terms of other, like, 1.18 will have, like, pouches and the updated biomes, all the cave biomes and stuff. But I believe if you get a wandering trader, he will sell you some of the things that are not yet in the game. In survival. So, I think how it works so you talk to him and I believe he has a chance to sell you some of the new things I'm not 100% sure on that that could be coming in the update I'm about to talk about nope okay here we go here's small drip leaf so because we don't have the biomes yet you have to buy the stuff from the wandering trader which you know isn't too much of a hassle uh, here we go here's pointed dripstone also, sugarcane, I forgot to mention, had a retexture, and it now reflects biome tinting, so whatever biome you're in, I believe sugarcane will look different. But yeah, that that's how you get stuff like azaleas and all that, drip leaf. Holy. That's going to be the only way to get the plants, like the azalea and the drip leaf and the... I forget what these are called. I always forget what these are called. Spore blossoms. And just things that, you know, you wouldn't... Like, anything that has that's related to the cave biomes. Um, final thing I really want to talk about is um, the 1.17.10. And this is for... I believe it's for Bedrock only. Uh, bedrock 1.17.10. It's going to be a minor update. There's no official release date yet. But basically, we're going to get candles in it, which is going to be crafted with, I believe, a string on top and a honeycomb beneath it. Uh, there's going to be 16 dyed types and a yellowish non-dyed type. can be lit by any item that produces fire, as in, like, lava, I think, and then flint and steel, anything that produces fire. Up to four can be placed in a single block, like sea pickles. And when you have all four, they have a maximum light level of 12. These are going to be really good for, like, if you want to build a medieval-style castle. I'm really excited to see people do stuff with that. Um, only, you cannot place, you cannot place multiple candles of, like, different colors. So you can have, like, a pink candle, a blue candle, a, ye um, a yellow candle, and a green candle. They all have to be the same color. And you can place only one on an uneaten cake and lit, and light it. And then you can have a birthday cake. And then if any of the cake is consumed, the candle pops off. And then changes, like the azalea will become flower, and the flowering, flowering azalea can be placed inside flower pots. Um, a bunch of blocks will get changed to max te 
textures of Java Edition. Signs, glowing text on signs, and it has an outer glow. You can make signs glow with the glowing ink sacks, fun fact. Um, and then more items are getting texture changes to match Java. Uh, axolotls, when fed with a bucket of tropical fish, now return to a water bucket instead of a normal bucket. Uh, axolotls' hitboxes will be smaller, and they no longer move their tails while playing dead. Um, goats, tempted goats, now move at the same speed as goats in Do Java Edition. Fall damage is uh, fall damage reduction is now combined with Java Edition. Skeletons now turn into strays um, after 20 seconds of powder being inside powder snow. I'm in step 45, and then a few things in crystals have a changed texture or look, and then bastion loot has been changed. Uh, it's overall been improved, and then. That is ma most of the stuff that most people care about. Um, like there are a few technical things that are changed. Like I said, I will link the 1.17 and 1.17.10 articles in the description below. You can check out all the change logs, everything. It's super helpful. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it without without this. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, I'll probably get back to streaming next week. I recorded this video on my PlayStation 4 because I wanted it to be high quality. I will be moving back to my Switch to stream, hopefully next week. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.